This is McCook's Mr. Bill. How do you know you're in southwest Nebraska? Well, you're driving on ditchless roads, no ditches, cornfields clear to the edge of the roads, and the cornfields, well, as normal, they're burning up in uh, the end of August here. Ain't froze or nothing. There's just no water out here in southwest Nebraska all too often. Cornfields, as far as the eye can see, but they ain't going to be producing much this year, I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. But the old farmers, they keep trying. They keep trying to put food on the table and fuel in our cars. Hello? I am slicing up my hedge apples. Drying them down, I be. Putting them on screens out here, letting them dry, so that I can then store them away until I need them. Different experiments that I do. Now, I or anyone else has to be real careful what they do nowadays, or you can be considered a laboratory. The government can come in and find you and do all sorts of trouble to you. Because uh, they sure don't want you to ever invent something that might actually help mankind. And that fine, you know, they probably get a kickback off of it one way or t'other. So without helping them, I'm trying to help mankind. This is one of the ways. But there are other ways that you can do things that wiggle the branches. Wiggle the branches. For example, they had... Uh, some years back, cattle started getting sick, mostly over there in Europe, England, for example. And they found out it was kind of a mad cow disease. And they figured out, finally, that it was because they was taking the dead cows and grinding them up and putting them in as filler for the food. In other words, those cows was eating cows, and that's how they got mad cow disease, to the most point. Keeping that in mind, though, you can make your own mad cow disease real easy. No, not nothing new or fancy, not nothing new I came up with. My grandmother was born in 1888, and she told that when she was a kid in the 1890s then, that her folks would have her go out and catch grasshoppers, as many as she could, she and her brothers and sisters, many as she could. Why? Well, they'd take all those grasshoppers and they would uh, put them in a deal and grind them up, mush them up, put water in there and get a good mush of maybe 100, 200 grasshoppers. Now, why do you do things like that? Well, because you can figure if you got 200 grasshoppers, probably one of them's got a disease. By mushing that up and getting it into a mush, if you will, into a liquid, semi-liquid anyway, that's a pretty good indication and letting it set so that it'll really expand and grow that disease within there. Then you take and you put that around your plants, along your road ditches and along other different places. Before they had pesticides, that's how they killed grasshoppers, a mad grasshopper disease, if you will. So if you think that we are a lot further ahead and uh, those guys 120 years ago, you might be mistaken. Because in a lot of ways, they were ahead of us. I hope you save some hedge apples and do some experiments with them. Because there's a lot of things you can do, and there's a lot of things we ain't even figured out what to do with them yet. Along with gourd leaves and other things. This is McCook's Mr. Bill. On the bottom of the pay scale don't mean you're dumb. It just means that that's where you're stuck and you're going to make the best of it.